This is the story of Star Trek, the motion picture. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the communicator beep like this. Let's begin now. Space, the final frontier. These are the continuing voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Far out in space, a mysterious giant cloud traveled silently toward a distant planet Earth. On its journey, it passed three Klingon warships on patrol. The Klingon captain hailed the cloud. You are violating Klingon territory. Respond or be destroyed. Receiving no reply, the ships fired. But the cloud easily deflected the bolts. In return, it fired a tremendous flash of energy at the ships, instantly disintegrating them. Admiral James T. Kirk, captain of the Starship Enterprise, was hurrying through Starfleet headquarters when he saw Sonak, a Vulcan member of his crew. Commander Sonak, why aren't you aboard? I am completing final briefing before the Enterprise launches. Belay that. Our launch time has been moved up. There's something deadly out there headed for Earth. We have to stop it. Within hours, Admiral Kirk transported up to the Starship Enterprise. There was confusion everywhere. New weapons and engines were being installed, and the workers rushed to finish in time. Chief Engineer Scott gave Kirk a worried greeting. Admiral, these departure orders. We can't be ready to leave dry dock in only 12 hours. Mr. Scott, ready or not, we're going. We've got to. Scotty's men doubled their efforts. A few last crew members beamed up, including the ship's new navigator, Ilea, a Delton. Kirk greeted the unusual-looking woman. Welcome aboard, Lieutenant Ilea. I believe you've met our executive officer, Commander Decker. She smiled. Oh, yes, Decker and I are old friends. Kirk called together his crew. An alien cloud is moving toward Earth at warp speed. It is destroying everything in its path. He was interrupted by an urgent transmission. This is Space Station Epsilon 9. The cloud is bearing down on us. We're scanning it. Oh no, they think our scans are hostile. We're under attack. Horrified, Kirk and his crew watched the view screen as the cloud disintegrated the helpless station. Meanwhile, on the planet Vulcan, Spock was undergoing the ritual of Kolinar a harsh discipline which would give him total logic. He knelt before one of the Vulcan masters. You have labored long, Spock. Now your training is complete. Take this pendant, a symbol of total logic. But Spock hesitated. He looked skyward, as though listening. Wanting to know his reason for ignoring her, the Vulcan master entered mind meld with Spock. You sense a far-off consciousness. It stirs your human half. And your human emotions keep you from the life of total logic. You have failed the test. The master turned from him and dropped the pendant in the dust. Spock knew that he'd have to go to the mind he sensed so far away. Kirk ordered the Enterprise to set out for the cloud. Decker protested. Captain, the engines haven't even been tested yet. Mr. Decker, every minute brings that thing closer to Earth. Head warp one, Mr. Sulu. Power poured into the untried engines. Suddenly, an energy imbalance threw the ship into a deadly whirlpool, a space vortex. Kirk shot to Sulu. Get us out of here! Full reverse! Kirk glanced at the bridge view screen. There's an asteroid caught in the vortex, dead ahead. Arm phasers, Mr. Chekhov. Decker leaped up. No! If the engines are out, so are the phasers. The new design links them. Use photon torpedoes! The torpedoes shot away and shattered the asteroid. The vortex disappeared. Thank you, Decker. You saved the ship. As Mr. Scott worked frantically to repair the engines, a shuttlecraft delivered a passenger to the Enterprise. To Kirk's surprise, it was Mr. Spock. I've been seeking a path to perfect logic, Captain. I sense that I'll find my answer in the cloud. I'm here to rejoin your crew. 
With the help of Spock's superior intellect, the engines were soon fixed, and the Enterprise sped to confront the alien cloud. The ship approached cautiously, but without warning, the cloud sent a deadly energy bolt smashing into their shields. They're holding, Captain, but they're badly damaged. Kirk spun to Lieutenant Uhura. We can't survive another hit. Send friendship messages on all channels. Uhura began transmitting. A second energy bolt flew at them and suddenly disappeared. Their message was understood. The Enterprise entered the cloud slowly. Once through the mist, the crew was stunned at what they saw. An enormous ship, almost 50 miles long, at the center of the cloud. Spock, who could build such a ship? I don't know, Captain. All I sense is a mind with a pattern of perfect logic and tremendous knowledge. In a flash of blinding light, a pillar of pure energy invaded the bridge. It stretched out an arm to the main computer console. Spock scanned it with his tricorder. It is a probe from the alien ship, Captain. It's draining the memory banks of our computer, including top secret information. Leaping to the console, Spock smashed the controls with his fists. The computer shorted out with a flash. To Decker's horror, the probe took control of Lieutenant Ilea. The Ilea probe then turned to Kirk. I have taken over this human unit so we could communicate. I have been programmed by Vija to learn about the USS Enterprise and the human units that infest it. Kirk frowned. Is Vija the captain of the alien ship? No, Vija is the ship. Kirk couldn't believe his ears. What does Vija want? Vija travels to Earth to find his creator. What makes Vija think his creator is on Earth? I do not know. Vija obeys the creator's commands to learn all that is learnable and to bring that knowledge back to the creator. They were now only hours from Earth. Captain Kirk decided on a desperate gamble. He and Spock put on spacesuits and entered the alien ship itself. There, they found V'ger's data banks. Captain, from what we've seen, I believe that V'ger is a living machine. If so, I can attempt to mind meld with it. Spock touched the data modules. Instantly, a flood of images overwhelmed his mind. Oh. He fell unconscious. When Spock awoke in the ship's sick bay, he called for Kirk. The Vulcan masters were wrong, Jim. Logic isn't enough. Vija knows perfect logic, but it's still unfulfilled, still incomplete. Spock grasped his friend's hand. This simple feeling, the warmth of friendship of human emotions, Vija cannot find. But at last, I have. As Vija approached the helpless Earth, it sent four huge bombs into orbit. Kirk snapped at Ilea. What is it doing? Vija radioed the creator, but received no answer. The human units on Earth must be interfering with the creator. Therefore, Vija is going to remove them. Remove? You mean destroy? Spock whispered to Kirk. Vija needs its creator badly. Use that against it. Kirk smiled. Ilea, I'll tell Vija where the creator is. But first, he must remove the bombs. Vija agrees. The Enterprise was pulled inside the giant spaceship. Kirk's landing party followed the Ilea probe out of the ship to their meeting with Vija. Kirk's eyes widened at the sight of Vija. Spock, it's a machine. An early space probe from Earth. Voyager, not Vija. Mr. Spock checked his tricorder. Readings indicate that V'ger was found by a planet of living machines. They built this ship so that V'ger could fulfill its programming to collect data and transmit it back to Earth. Decker nodded. Of course. That's why V'ger came back here. To give its data to mankind, its creator. Kirk shouted. V'ger! We are the creator! 
Ilea blinked skeptically. Then you must join with Vija. Spock's eyes lit with understanding. Fascinating. Vija's vast knowledge has reached the limits of the logical universe. In order to grow further, it requires the human ability to leap beyond logic. Vija knows he must evolve. That is why he must join with a human being. Deckard turned to Kirk. I'll do it. I love Ilea, and this is the only way I can be reunited with her. And it will be an incredible adventure. Jim, I want this as much as you want the Enterprise. Decker ran to Ilea. A powerful energy beam engulfed them as Decker slowly became part of Vija. Blinded by the brilliant transformation, the landing party raced back to the Enterprise. On the bridge, Kirk watched in awe as Vija changed itself into pure energy and vanished into another dimension. Gentlemen, I believe we've just seen the birth of a new life form. Bones nodded. Complete with a lot of foolish human emotions. Right, Mr. Spock? True, Doctor. But without them, we are not complete. Amen, Spock. Mr. Sulu, ahead warp one. Out there. That away. Thank <laughs> you.